when political commentary for the media speaks. Greetings! Yes, we're trying to sync both cameras, and it doesn't really work because all the gear we own is crap. But unfortunately, the news commentary that we give is right on point, so at least something is going in our favor. Uh, Christelle still decorating the Christmas tree. It is uh, the 30th, and she's still decorating it. We're going to leave the tree up until she finally has it decorated. I've, I've never seen anything like it. On Christmas, we didn't have the ham. I was driving around <laughs> trying to get the Christmas ham on Christmas Day. So, uh... Things work a little differently here. We're very, very busy, I guess. Um, I do have a lot of interesting things to get to today. And I want to make sure that everyone knows that uh, you can make sure you support the show by supporting the people that support the show. So, brought to you by D. Allen Ross. He wrote The Day the Lights Went Out. And I think if you read it, you'll find it to be a very funny, humorous read. Do make sure you do so. The Day the Lights Went Out, D. Allen Ross. He brings you this. Russian Embassy. Obama sanctions attempt to restart the Cold War. Trump supporters fear the move is a ploy for Obama to stay in power. It, we hear that every year. Every year we hear that the president that's in power is going to do something to stay in power. That's not what I'm worried about as much as I'm concerned with him signing the NDAA and things like that while he is still in power. Um, has he done some harm with the way that he has treated uh, Putin or Russia? Yeah, I think he has. But I think a lot of what he has done can very likely be undone by uh, Trump or you know, future administrations. The most problematic thing about what Obama has done to Russia, or with Russia, is that Ronald Reagan taught us that to engage the enemy, and to engage your foe, and not necessarily to capitulate and to give up, roll over and play dead, but that there are diplomatic solutions to problems that should be pursued as opposed to the, the rhetoric like Obama is using here and actions like Obama is using can lead to a Cold War breakdown where a communication stops and uh, an us versus them siege mentality takes place. That happens. That can lead to a lot of different um, confrontations that could bring about a hot war, a nuclear war, a, a, a fighting war between the United States and Russia. Well, said the Russian embassy in London responded to President Barack Obama's decision to expel 35 Russian diplomats from the United States by warning that Obama was engaging in Cold War déjà vu. This is the man who won the Nobel Peace Prize. Uh, go figure. Describing the diplomats as intelligence operatives, the State Department said that it would also close two Russian compounds in New York and Maryland. Diplomats have been given 72 hours to leave. It says that the administration once again failed to produce any hard evidence that Russia was behind any of the hacks that had an impact on the U.S. presidential election, which was lost by Hillary Clinton, the candidate Obama supported. It's easier for them to blame Russia <coughs> than it is for them to accept one simple fact. Hillary Clinton won 52, 53 counties out of 2,032. I think that's the number. America, to a very large degree, except for a few mega centers in the country, have rejected socialism, have rejected what the left wants to do, and she lost on her own merit, just as Trump won on his own merit. Now, um, I'm doing some work with um, the Conservative Daily Post right now, and I've got an article, I think, going up, dealing with a lot of this, with how... America always needs a boogeyman anymore. We're supposed to believe it really happened. O Osama bin Laden took that kidney dialysis machine from cave to cave. We're supposed to believe that there's a reason we went in and killed Fuzzy Head, Gaddafi, we destroyed Libya. Um, he wasn't a great man, but he certainly was better at keeping the peace and the mess that we're looking at now. Um, he was making sure ISIS didn't rise. He, he, was, he was certainly better than what we left behind. But America... <coughs> pardon me. <coughs> America always needs some kind of an enemy. They always need someone to fight. 
Wars used to end, I wrote. I remember ticker tape parades, but we don't see ticker tape parades anymore. You don't see men kissing young maidens in the street because wars don't ever end. President Barack Obama expels 35 Russian diplomats. Uh, the tweet was accompanied by an image of a duck with the word lame. It's what, uh, it's what, uh, Vladimir Putin responded with. Uh, people will be glad to see the last of this hapless administration with a picture of a duck. It's true, because Obama has been a disaster for diplomatic relations in the world. There is a way to handle the Ukraine, and there's a way to mishandle the Ukraine. And again, no one likes the Nazi elements that exist in the Ukraine. But what, they're going to see old glory and suddenly give up their hateful ways? No, it, this is a Russian affair. Unless it affects a business dealing in the United States, which so far that hasn't even been hinted at, then it's not America's affair. Um, is it immoral to be Nazi scum? It certainly is. It's not illegal. If the people in the Ukraine are acting in this way, then it is important to, you know, maybe not promote what they're doing, but going and starting a war with them is going to bring in more sympathizers to the vile belief system than if we just stay out of it and allow Russia to handle Russian affairs. Let's not forget that Russia has a little bit of experience in how to handle Nazis, so I think they're going to be fine. Meanwhile, Press Secretary Dmitry Peskov said that Obama's actions were the manifestations of an aggressive foreign policy, but stuck, a level, stuck to a level-headed tone when he added that there's no need to rush with countermeasures. So prominent Trump supporters even fear that the move could be a ploy to escalate tensions with Russia so that the president-elect's inauguration is suspended and Obama stays in power. I don't really see that happening. But I'll tell you one thing I could definitely envision here. I could see this being... This is going to be where, because Putin is going to be very happy to have somebody with a brain in their head that knows something about diplomacy when Trump gets in. They're going to say, well, look how much nicer Obama, uh, look how much better Putin treats Trump than Obama. Well, why wouldn't you? One of them is trying to talk out your problems, and one of them has done everything to escalate it on the world stage and uh, make it much worse. America probably will come out on top of, uh, against Russia again. We have a history of doing so. But to do so in the way that Reagan did it, and not in the way that Obama wants to do it, is key here. Because let's remember, they're energy giants, but there's not a lot that you can produce in Russia. You know, I mean, borscht only goes so far. At the end of the day, they are a frozen wasteland. They have trouble growing their food. When the nation grows, they have trouble finding enough food for them. They, they import massive amounts of food. I mean, really, what lives in Russia? Bison? How much of it can you eat? I'm counting even enough bison. You get the point. Penguins! Not really. Obama's historic land grab, 553 million acres for conservation from Breitbart. This is... Um, this is the Bundy land grab on steroids. I really can't believe that more people aren't talking about this. In America, you are supposed to be able to own your own land. Oh, great, Costello's come to finish our tree. Um, that has not been the case that we are seeing. Thank you. President Barack Obama decreed two more national monuments from his vacation home in Hawaii on Wednesday, taking 1.65 million acres from the western land for management by the federal government. Excuse me, dying of thirst. What that means is, this is land that the government takes that can never be owned or used or harvested or in other wise implemented by any private sector person at all. America is buying up more and more so that people can own less and less and do less and less and rely on other countries more and more.
kill this uh, sound that comes. Breitbart has had a habit of doing that lately, which is uh, real rather depressive. <coughs> Anytime you click on a, uh, uh, something that's not playing stuff. The new Bear Ears Buttes Monument includes 1.35 million acres of Utah, and the Gold Butte Monument includes 300,000 acres in Nevada. That makes a total of 553 million acres of national lands and waters that Obama has repurposed for conservation and protection using the 1906 Antiquities Act. More than any other president, and this is from the New York Times, more than 80% of Nevada and 65% of Utah is owned by the federal government. According to National Public Radio, 80% of Nevada? The government owns 80% of Nevada. Does anyone find that alarming? That is not the land of the free if the government owns 80% of a state. 65% of Utah. I think the Mormons have like multiple marriage compounds on the rest. I'm kidding. Utah Republican leaders in Congress were furious after Obama decided to designate the controversial Bear Ears Monument. This arrogant act by a lame duck president will not stand, Utah Republican Senator Mike Lee responded in a statement. I will work tirelessly with Congress and in the upcoming Trump administration to honor the will of the people of Utah and undo this designation. <coughs> I would imagine so. <coughs> this is why you got to worry about the government, friends. In November, a Utah poll of residents found that 60% of the people there were opposed to the idea. Only 33% supported it. So what did they do? They went ahead and did it anyway in one of the biggest land grabs in U.S. history. It was a midnight move and a slap in the face to the people of Utah, they write, attempting to silence the voices of those who will hear, who bear the heavy burden that it imposes. Uh, he called Obama's actions a major break in protocol, this is Jason Chavez, because it did not have the support of Utah's governor. It didn't have the support of the people, it didn't have the support of anyone. They just went ahead and blindly did it. And that's what you see uh, with, re with reoccurring frequency in administrations where the government has gone out of control. It's the kind of thing that our government is supposed to exist to be against, but that's not what we're seeing. Uh, moving on here, friends, I got a little bit of Fukushima news. There will be the massive Fukushima update likely on uh, Tuesday or Wednesday of next week as uh, Christelle destroys the set. Fukushima radiation has contaminated the entire Pacific Ocean and it's going to get worse. Now you're going to say, I've heard this before. But you haven't. This is dated December the 29th, 2006. So I mean like 12 hours ago. The, you can see it here on low def. The plume is absolutely devastating. Now it's a very bad time for milk and mushroom friends. A uh, very, very bad time because our radionuclides tend to adhere greatly to that. The nuclear disaster has contaminated... This is from uh, theearthchild.co.za. The nuclear disaster has contaminated the world's largest ocean in only five years, and it's still leaking 300 tons of radioactive waste every day. Now, for those of you who have been regular listeners to the show, that number is going to sound very, very familiar to you. It has been 300 tons of radioactive waste that have been leaking on this thing since pretty much day one. And it is still the same grim number that is leaking now. In other words, they've done nothing in five years in terms of quelling how much radioactive toxins are finding their way into the water supply. Which is why you can't find a tuna out of the Pacific Ocean without a uh, deformity and a high radioactive level. So, of course, the Obama administration just doesn't test the food, at least not properly. Now, what was the most dangerous nuclear disaster in world history? Most people say the Chernobyl nuclear disaster in the Ukraine, but they'd be wrong. Uh, we all know about the uh, 2011 earthquake. I'm not going to go ahead and read that all over again. I will remind you that it's owned by TEPCO, which is GE. But it said, every day, Fukushima continues to leak an astounding 300 tons of radioactive waste into the Pacific Ocean. Yes, that is every day. And it will continue to do so indefinitely as the source of the leak cannot be sealed and it is inaccessible 
to both humans and robots due to the extremely high temperatures. We've covered on here before how the, the uh, robotics will actually melt down in the radioactive heat that is produced from this wonderful meltdown. Well, now it comes out that uh, because they, they can test it through temperature analysis and dating which radionuclides it is, the entire Pacific Ocean has been covered in just five years. It could easily be the worst environmental disaster in human history, and it is almost never talked about by any politicians, establishment scientists, or the news. Chris Busby called it the single worst disaster in human history. It is interesting to note that TEPCO is a subsidiary of General Electric, one of the largest companies in the world which has considerable control over numerous news corporations and politicians alike. Could it possibly explain the lack of news coverage that Fukushima has received in the last five years? No, not a chance. They bring good things to life. There is also evidence that GE knew about the poor condition of the Fukushima reactors for decades and did nothing. This led to 1,400 Japanese citizens going to sue GE for their role in a disaster. I hope they bankrupt the company. Even if we can't see the radiation itself, some parts of North America's western coast where nobody should live. You should not live in Oregon. You should not live in the coast of uh, California. You should not live in Hawaii. You should not live anywhere over there because you're poisoning yourself and you're going to die. Um, they're worried about the dollars, friends. The bottom line, they're not going to tell you that. So it's up and down North America's west coast and has been feeling the effects for years. Not long after Fukushima, fish in Canada began bleeding from their gills, mouth, and eyeballs. Many of those foods I've, we've covered on here and shown you pictures that you're eating when you buy fish. This disease has been ignored by the government and has decimated native fish populations, including the North Pacific herring. Elsewhere in western Canada, independent scientists look up Dana Dunford. <coughs> have measured a 300% increase in the level of radiation. According to them, the amount of radiation in the Pacific Ocean is increasing every year. Yeah, by 300 tons a day. <coughs> Why is this being ignored by the mainstream media? It says it might have something to do with the fact that the U.S. and Canadian governments have banned their citizens from talking about Fukushima so that people don't panic. Well, we've been talking about it here and we're not going to stop. It says, further south in Oregon, the U.S. Uh, starfish began losing legs and then disintegrating. We covered that. Now they are dying in record amounts, putting the entire Pacific, uh, Pacific Oceanic ecosystem in that area at risk. However, government officials say Fukushima is not to blame, even though the radiation in Oregon tuna tripled after Fukushima. Yeah, don't you love how it's always, oh, it's not the radiation, no, it's not this great big glowing uh, basic neutron sun that we've built in the middle of our planet. Do you know that? <clears throat> we were talking about this yesterday at dinner, uh, my friend Dan and my brother, basis for passing time keyboardist. If you um, were on another planet and you were looking at the Earth from a long distance away, you'd say, that planet over there, it's a very strange planet. It's the third planet away from its rather normal star. But it has its own star embedded in the planet. And you wouldn't know why, because you wouldn't know that some boneheads built a nuclear power plant on a fault zone near an island and melted it down. Um, you would think that the planet has its own mini sun that is very visible from light years away if... Uh, aliens were to have such technology and exist. You know what I mean? It looks as though we have a sun in our planet. Could that be any reason that we're seeing the problem in the Pacific Ocean? No, not a chance. <clears throat> Friends, a couple more stories to get to. These are brought to you by Sticker Junkie. If you haven't been to Sticker Junkie, do go. You're going to get amazing stickers. And on checkout, type in correct views, the correct views you'll be getting an even greater savings because you're a listener to the show. Sticker Junkie. That's uh, Junkie I-E. This is also from Breitbart. I wonder if it's going to play any music. Israel almost never benefits from compromise. Uh, this is very true. How many of you remember the Gaza Strip controversy? If you don't, I'm going to uh, remind you and give you a little history lesson here. The Palestinians complained for a very long time that Gaza, <clears throat> Gaza, 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 oh my Gaza, they were going to get Gaza, and then everything was going to be right with the world, 
Suddenly, Israel's right to exist would be noticed. The birds would sing and the flowers would bloom. So Israel gave up Gaza, and in no time at all, I think weeks if not days, they were being bombed from Gaza by the very peaceful people who they had just given Gaza to so that they could have peace. That is Israel's <coughs> history in almost every time that it's given up its postage stamp size land to another nation. Now listen to this. Outgoing Secretary of State John Kerry, Scary Kerry, placed the burden of peace squarely on Israel in his speech at the State Department on Thursday. <coughs> he acknowledged this is not to say that the settlements are the whole or even the primary cause of the conflict. Of course they are not. Nor can you say that if the settlements were suddenly removed, they'd be peace. Yet he urged the Israeli government to stop settlement growth and did not distinguish between new settlements, settlements and growth and existing ones. Israel <coughs> is a sovereign nation. Therefore, it should be allowed to have its settlements where it wants. Are you seeing what's going on here? In America, see how these stories tie together? In America, what you have is the ridiculousness of the government buying 80 or taking 80 percent of one state and 65 percent of another. What you have in Israel is the United States telling Israel that it needs to get rid of its land, anything to keep the land away from the people. Give it, give it to the Palestinians. Call, don't call them a threat, even though they want to destroy the nation of Israel. Um, let's just give them and more of their land away. Israel already tried a settlement freeze in 2009 in an attempt to satisfy President Barack Obama. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu announced a 10-month memorandum on the new home construction in West Bank settlements. Still, the Palestinians did not come to the negotiating table. Instead, the Palestinians ratcheted up their demands and their efforts to use international pressure through the UN to isolate Israel and assert statehood without borders, capital, or peace. In Israel's entire history, there is only one instance in which territorial compromise was rewarded with gains in peace. It says that was when Israel gave Egypt the entire Sinai Peninsula in the Camp David Accords in 78. And the peace with Egypt has been cold at times, and diplomatic relations have often been rocky. But there has not been a war between Israel and Egypt for nearly four decades. Uh, that is because... Egypt is not necessarily as indoctrinated into the violent, insane, radical views that you see from the sides of Islam that are now wanting more land from Israel. It says on every other occasion Israel has suffered for its willingness to compromise because the Palestinians and other Arab groups have taken advantage of Israeli concessions to launch new attacks and to make more ambitious demands. So you gave us land once, we want more land. It's like we took your lunch money, now we want to take your shoes. We know about in 93, it says, uh, in the Oslo Peace Accords, Israel recognized a Palestinian liberation organization as a legitimate representative of the Palestinian people and yielded rule to the Palestinians in major population areas in the West Bank. So great, the, the birds sang, right? Rather than use those gains to prepare for statehood and peace, Palestinian Authority Chairman, he was scum, Yasser Arafat, continued to encourage terror against Israel and to incite Palestinians to hate Jews. Eventually, he launched a second bloody antifada. So this, and there's time and time and time and time again it goes over this. Every time Israel gives up its land for peace, what it gets is more warfare and less land. And suddenly we're supposed to expect them to want to do this another time. Because it'll work so much better this time. That brings us to the dumdy of the day. Christelle is doing the Christmas tree for everyone. She's going to be doing this Christmas tree in Easter. It's, uh, for those of you that don't know, uh, in the studio every year we decorate for the holidays. Uh, Christelle, as we're into the dumdy of the day, uh, <laughs> We had a very good Christmas, but I was driving around on Christmas Day to find the Christmas ham. So that is the way that has gone. By the way, there is no stores to help you on Christmas, not none whatsoever. And it amazes me because I, I'm not in favor of working employees on Christmas Day. But if you have temp help, 
and they sign up for it. Like, I work on the Polar Express most weekends at the beginning of December because I worked on this train where I got to take pictures of families and people uh, on board for holiday. Awesome job, by the way. Shout out to Fred Flick. Um, Clearview Photography. I want to mention this because on Christmas Day or any other holiday, I'm sure it happens on Easter, maybe St. Patrick's Day, I don't know. I do know that there were hundreds of people crammed in the couple stores that were open trying to buy things. So if there, and I'm not, I'm not being racist, I'm sure I'm open on Islamic holidays, so that's not what I'm saying here. I'm saying if you are an Islamist, or if you are a Hindu, or if you are whoever, and you do not celebrate Christmas, if you open up a grocery store on Christmas Day, you will be able to pay your bills for the entire month. I've never seen anything like it. Again, if, if you are a Christian, by all means, be home with your family like I try to be. But make a mental note. Don't ever do that because you'll, you'll starve to death. You'll end up with Denny's ham. But it was very good. I bought the ham home and then Christelle made turkey and a bunch of other stuff. Man brags on Facebook about refusing to help Trump supporters stuck in the snow. Truth revolt. So basically, this dumb deal of the day here just brags about being a rather crappy human being. Because it used to be about discourse, but at the end of the day, Americans were supposed to be the United States. That is why Congress and the Senate and various things are set up in order for people to argue and to debate. That's why shows like this exist to encourage commentary on such matters. So things like this don't happen. Can you feel the progressive love? The Griot.com reports that Troy Brown, a Bernie Sanders supporter, was going to stop and help a woman in a car in the heavy Ohio snowstorm. But when he saw her Donald Trump bumper sticker, he decided to drive on and took pictures. He took a photo of the car and posted it on Facebook with the caption, I was going to help her, but she was a, she was a Trump sticker on her car. Brown later went on to post a two-second video which has been viewed over 190,000 times of his sour face after it happened. You know what? I, I have Trump stickers all over my van and to this rotten person, you know what? I would rather be in the snow than be helped by a Bernie Sanders supporter. So you could probably go to hell and I can give you directions if you don't know how to get there. His Facebook post has been liked and shared over 5,000 times by those loving people on the left, although he has also received a lot of online criticism for it. This only prompted him to double down on his list of people Trump supporters can help when they need it. Yo President, ExxonMobil, CEO3, General Flynn's son 4, the gunman at Comet Pizza in D.C. Now again, asking questions about Comet Pizza does not say you should go in and shoot up Comet Pizza. So the man is completely misguided from what people were ever saying about the place to begin with. Brown regularly posts political issues according to Griot. He states that he does not approve of Trump supporters, rapists, trafficking, or murderers. Fair enough. Truth Revolt doesn't approve of Bernie Sanders supporters, rapists, drug offenders, murderers, or smug jerks. And there seems to be some crossover in that list. I believe in peace and harmony. Trump didn't display that, so Brown decided he wouldn't either. A progressive hypocrite and very proud of it. Friends, you're listening to The Correct Views. Sam I.B. DeGange doing uh, political commentary for the Media Speaks, signing off. Christelle, is the Christmas tree done? No. <laughs> you do know that New Year's, my dear, New Year's Eve is uh, Saturday. Yeah. How much more do you have to do? Uh... Maybe one more day. Friends, if there's a Christmas tree up after New Year's, just remember, it has been brought to you by Christelle. If you would like to donate to the show, you can do so at the correct views at hotmail.com. Uh, you can donate through PayPal. All the money you give to me goes towards a better show. This is the studio that I'm in. Uh, the, the, the TV will be back up if the Christmas tree is ever rendered complete. I just want to see how long it actually takes before our Christmas is done here at 1230, 2016. Um, thank you for listening, friends. Share the video, hit subscribe, and uh, keep it moving forward, friends, because you guys are what keep, what keep the subscribers coming in, you're what keep the news going out, 
and you what make us do it every day. Thanks a lot, friends. See you soon. Fraggle, you got to get that.